You're listening to MPS Connection with A.J. Hoffman. Perfect. Welcome, welcome, welcome to MPS Connections. I'm your host, A.J. Hoffman. I am joined today by Tracy Speaker Gerstheimer. How are you today, Tracy? Awesome. Good. We are talking today about a little bit about dual enrollment, but more early middle college. And we had some really good conversations, just her and I, about early middle college. So I want to talk about that a little bit today, probably at, at greater length than most people would care to hear about, but I think it's a really interesting topic and it's it's important. So um, Tracy, can you kind of start us off? Tell me what, what's the difference between dual enrollment and early middle co college? Yeah, that's an, a popular question, right? So dual enrollment is um, the law. Uh, students are allowed to take up to 10 college courses during their high school um, careers and potentially um, students can take those within with anywhere anywhere really the majority of our students do it at Delta okay it has to be a class that is not offered at their home school um, it has to be um, a class that will lead to either um, something that they're trying to explore or um, potentially a degree. It can also be used as kind of a buffet, like I'm going to try and experience what it's like to go to college. So I'd like to take this particular class because I'm not really sure what I want to do after I graduate from high school. So that's dual enrollment in a nutshell. Early Middle College, on the other hand, is a very structured program that is guiding students toward obtaining a particular degree within five years. So those students have an extra year of time, the fifth year as we call it, to accrue credits toward an associate's degree, a certification, um, or you know however many credits they can possibly gain right and they're structured to be on a specific program so if a student wants to be a biologist or a nurse they are meeting with the advisor at the college and mapping out the specific electives that they need to take that will transfer to their university of choice excellent very very good uh, encompassing answer <laughs> now we you and I, we talked to, we interviewed about 12 different students this week uh, to, who were uh, early middle college students that are in, enrolled in the program. I, so this kind of, I kind of already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyways. What, what's the ideal student? What does the ideal student look like? Mm. Um, so I would say that an early middle college student just needs to be a student that is good at managing their time, um, is willing to do something a little different, and can advocate for themselves. They have to have some of the college, college readiness skills that we work to develop in high school, right? Yeah. Like asking your teachers a question if you're confused. If you don't have the confidence to do that in a college setting and advocate for yourself, that may be a difficulty for you. Um, if, if you have trouble being organized in high school, where there's a lot of support and teachers and reminders and parent view and student view, it may be difficult for you to do that in a college setting where there's less structure. So really, the, there isn't a particular type of student we're looking for or that is best for this program, we're looking for students to have a certain set of skills that will help them transition to taking classes in this really different kind of environment. Can any student participate? So students can participate right now if they are rising sophomores, so if we're talking about next year's uh, incoming cohort, rising sophomores or juniors can enter the program and that's an addition. So this year's cohort is only rising juniors and we recently got approval to add rising sophomores to next year's cohort. Awesome, okay. Now I, uh, another, uh, another thing I'm really excited about asking you 
because we got this question kind of answered when we talked to some of our students. Uh, was it Tuesday? Tuesday? Yeah. What are socially? What are some of the benefits a student can gain from this experience? Oh yeah. Um, I think that what the students had to say was really, really interesting because some of them say, I didn't really see myself um, being in a college environment. Like I had a hard time imagining what that would be like. And now I find that I really enjoy it. I enjoy connecting with my professors. It's, I enjoy the structure of the class. And I feel more confident knowing that I'm successful in this program right now. And it's increased my thinking about what my possible post-secondary options are. Um, I think in addition to, you know, earning degree, earning a degree or is earning many, many credits um, nearly free of charge, there's lots of other like social and emotional benefits for students to do things like this. Um, to go and be in a classroom with different students because in a community college environment, for example, you might have students who've been out in the workforce for a long time that are now returning and these students are treated just like college students. Nothing is different for them and they're interacting with different peers that they wouldn't normally interact with in a high school setting. Is there any ideal field of study that an uh, early middle college student is uh, should be pursuing? No, it's open to them to decide. In fact, part of the structure of the program incorporates career exploration. And so students are expected to earn a certain amount or spend a certain amount of time participating in career exploration activities. Mm -hmm. So that might be attending a job fair. That might be attending some of our structured like advising sessions with the college where they would come, which we're planning some for this cohort in January, where they come to the high school and they meet with students. So what's nice about that is the community college has all these resources that I know I took advantage of when I was in college because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I remember taking a test and I got some results about what my strengths would be and what fields could match my strengths. And I used that information to kind of narrow down my decision about what I might study. So our high school students can still take advantage of those same resources that the college offers. And I think that's pretty exciting. We have some of those platforms in our high school setting, you know, where, where students start even in middle school with Zello exploring their careers. But they need more individual attention and they get that in the early middle college. And it can be any pathway. Yeah. It's not limited to a certain major or <clears throat> career. Right. Yeah. Well, let's speak candidly for a second because, like I said, you and I had a conversation. We've had a couple conversations that were really nice about our own career paths or our own college experiences. Um, I thought I was going to kind of follow in the footsteps of my father, who was a chiropractor, and so I kind of went pre-med when I started off, and I started off right away as a freshman in, um, at Central Michigan. Didn't do well. It's very hard. The prereqs are, are vastly different than what you would take at a community college, and so I, I kind of failed out of there. <laughs> Took, I think, a semester, a semester to a year off, and then re-enroll, I had a discussion about kind of what um, uh, what do you really want to do? Do you really want to be a chiropractor or do you want to go into what you really want to do, which is writing and journalism and, ask, you know, talking to young people and, and asking questions. And my parents were pretty cool about that, so then I changed my career path and did that instead. If I had had the early middle college option, I think my experience would have been uh, tremendously different. I probably would have had a, a, an extra year, you know, to spare, right? I mean, what what yeah. do you have to say? Your path is kind of similar, right? Well, I, th I think most young people don't really know what they want to do until they have an opportunity to go try something in that field. Um, and I appreciate your story so much because many more people have those stories and don't share them, right? Because right. it's embarrassing, you know, or it, it's perceived as embarrassing. 
it's yeah. kind of a stigma about dropping out of college or yes, taking but what I an love unconventional of, path. Yes, I love about your story is that your parents said, let's think about what you really love right. to do yeah. and turn to that, right? Um, you know, and I've shared with you that uh, I'm the first person in my family to go to college. Um, I still am the first person in my family to go to college. I ended up going to MSU. I remember when I asked my high school counselor to write me a letter of recommendation, my counselor said, I don't think you'll get into school there. Oh, and I said, geez. well, just write me the letter anyway, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Because I didn't spend the first two years of my high school career being a really focused student. I didn't figure out school until junior and senior year. So I didn't have the highest GPA. And I got accepted there, which surprised many people. Um, but my parents didn't know how to navigate the system of college. Like, how do I enroll you? How do I register you for classes? Not even asking themselves the question of, how are we going to pay for this, right? right? Yeah. I got a small scholarship and a small grant that offset some of the costs, but by and large, my education was paid for through student loans, which up until about eight months ago, I was still paying. <laughs> no. Yes. Well, it's just the reality of it. Right? It is the reality yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and so when I think about programs like this, <clears throat> I think about what a life-changing opportunity that would have been for myself and for so many other students in our district. Um, the barrier for my particular family was funds. And I remember my dad saying to me, I know you want to go to college. I support that. But why can't you just go to Delta? or to Central Michigan first, because then you can live at home and save money. I don't want you to enter the world with student debt. Right. And being a, a teenager that didn't listen <laughs> to my parents, I thought I really need to leave um, this area and go explore something else. And so I wanted to go to MSU. As an adult, I look back on that and think, my pathway would have been really different had I chosen something different, right? Um, and this type of program, I think, if all students had an opportunity to sort of test out college, begin to explore college, earn some credits, this is life-saving. It's life-altering life for many, many students. And I think about, like, in our orientation for this first cohort at Delta, you know, some families express, like, I've got multiple children, I've been worrying about how I might pay for college. Whatever benefit my child can get from this program is fantastic for us. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, a, there's vast differences between high school and college. So there's a bit of a, a culture shock. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk about the, uh, the maturity factor with, with some of these, these students and, and who chooses to go into this program? Yeah. So. Um, Students have got to be able to work independently and manage their time and ask questions when they need help. And if you can't do those things or you haven't been practicing those things, I'm not saying that you can't do this program. I think it might be more challenging for you to do this program. So when you think about college classes, they don't meet every single day like a high school class. So often you're told, Hey, there's going to be this paper due, uh, it's due on this date, and a test, or whatever the assignments are. And here's what those things should be about. There isn't a daily reminder to work on those things or to read to prepare for the exam. You're expected to organize and make a plan to meet those expectations. And I can see that that's hard for some of the students in the cohort now because they've had such a structured support throughout high school and all these different ways in which teachers have supported them and reminded them to stay on top of their work or to work on things in class. So I don't think we can underestimate the, the amount of savings that a student can gain from being a part of this program. $17,000 is kind of what, what a lot of students were throwing out there when we were talking mm -hmm. to them this week. I didn't know they were. They had calculated it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not calculated. I think they were. They were really. <laughs> they, well, you know, one or two of them said well, that money could go towards a car or see other college after this, and a lot of them are going to end up with 
well, they will end up with an associate's degree at the end of this. That's the goal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, unless something catastrophic happens or you drop out of high school, which most of them don't, it's, you know, you're pretty well invested in these, in high school and college at that point, you're going to end up with a college degree at the end of high school. Can, can you talk about the importance of that? Well, like that's a, like that, yeah, like there's any downside to that, right? I mean. I'm trying to think through what the downside is. I mean, I suppose that, um, you know, students change their minds, right? And if they get far enough along in the program and they start taking electives because they're thinking about um, studying a specific area and they change their mind, those credits may not transfer sure. to the program yeah. they wish to pursue. And so we a possible downside is asking students to think sooner a bit sooner about what they want to do. On the other hand, I think of my own educational journey and all the classes that I took that did not result in me getting a major in English and a right. minor in Spanish because I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. So I spent a lot of time taking other things that didn't count toward my major and I ended up having a lot more credits over what was needed. So although it's potentially a con, it could also be considered as an efficient and cost-effective way to possibly explore a career option with true. some yeah. flexibility to change your mind, right? Right, and, and we discussed that before. I, everybody knows the, um, the, the nature of college where you, you might, you, you get enrolled in a couple classes and then you find out, uh, maybe this isn't for me, or this is too hard, or do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? And it changes your career path just by attending those classes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. In talking to, uh, to students, what have you found are some of their reservations about dual enrollment or early middle college? I think initially they thought it was going to be really, really hard. And they were nervous about their schedule. Like, what would my day look like? Yeah. Um, I think many have been pleasantly surprised that it's not hard and I'm using air quotes per se it's about managing your time you are well prepared to do this work if you are a student within Midland Public Schools you are well prepared by our teachers here I believe that you can go and take English 111 for example and be prepared to take that class but you need to manage your time um, the schedule piece, you know, so most of the students have periods one, two, three, and four, and then they have period five and six off, and they leave school early and go home or go to their class. Some of them take an online class, some of them have class at the Midland location, some of them have class at the Saginaw location. <laughs> So they have three different options of how they can take their classes. So some students load up and say, I'm gonna take both of my classes back to back on the same days, so I make one trip to Delta. Um, some students have a different approach based on what their extracurricular activities are or whether or not they work. And there are some students that work, as you heard in those interviews. So. I think initially they were wondering how am I, how is this all going what is this all going to look like yeah, right absolutely. but it's actually it's actually worked out to be okay there's a few students who have opted to have uh, free periods in the middle of the day so they come to school and do periods like 1 and 2 and have period 3 and 4 off and they travel during the middle of the day to the college setting to take the class it all depends on what the student needs. In that case, the student was an athlete and they wanted to have time after school to participate in their sport. So course selection is, it's got to be something that they get some help and support with and there's a conversation about, okay, what are you planning to do in the fall? You know, are you gonna do something after school? All right, let's look at the catalog together and look at the times because many students don't know how to read a college course catalog, right? There's a little art to understanding what's there that you quickly catch on. 
but we have to show them. All right, let's look, let's figure out how does this work? How do you drop the class? Yeah. How do you add the class? Yeah. Some of the students that we talked to on, on Tuesday, what were some of the, stu the um, I'm sorry, some of the stories that really captivated you or, or that you felt were really important? I like all of their stories, AJ. Yeah. <laughs> I do too, I do too. Well, yeah. what were some of the, the stand, give me like one standout one. Every time a student talks about, like, there are several of our students who know exactly what they want to do and have expressed that to you. And so I love hearing them say, I know I'm going to go to this university and I'm going to study this and therefore I am getting this type of an associate degree. I like that. But then there are other students who said in those interviews, I'm not really sure yet, but um, I like thinking about this and I'm thinking about this path or this path. Like, I like those pieces too. Um, each student has a story. You know, some are older siblings who are taking care of the younger siblings. Some are working. Some are in sports. Some are in theater. Um, they're all managing to do a lot of different things that they enjoy and do this program. And it's nice to see that they've done that and it's been possible. Well, and that's why I, we're going to include some of those stories in, in the podcast. So that's why I kind of wanted to bring that up and see you know, if there were any particular ones that you really liked, that you really wanted to be featured. I'm kind of with you, though. I, I like all of their stories. I, I thought they all had something positive or something important to say. Um, I guess what we, what we could take away from this is that there really kind of is no ideal student for, for early middle college. Um, you know, we, we had one student say that she, she was very upfront about it. She said she had ADHD, or she has ADHD, and that's a struggle that she deals with every day. Um, I know you have a few other students that have some disabilities that they may or may not want to talk about, and, and that's fine, and that's something that they, they deal with, but it doesn't hold them back from, from having a college career as well. Mm -hmm. There's also students that are heavily involved in extracurricular activities. We had a baseball player that we talked to and a couple soccer players and volleyball players. And that doesn't hold them back from, from being a part of the early middle college program as well, right? No, no. It's just about planning right. the courses around what their schedule is. I guess that was the, yeah. <laughs> That was the key variable. They all kind of had that in common. They all said, look, if, if you know how to manage your time <laughs> and you know how to ju just uh, communicate with your, your professors and your teachers at school, then things will be okay. It's, it's not any more work than what people are probably thinking. I think a lot of students probably have the perception that you've got this full high school load and you've also got, you know, four college classes that you have to take also. And, how are you going to be able to manage any time at all? So you're you're going to school for 15 hours a day every day, and how is anybody supposed to be able to do that, right? You know. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes high school students are don't remember that you don't go to class every day. Right. In college. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, Thursdays or Mondays or, and Wednesdays. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was another. Uh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was really nice listening to their stories, and it's always nice talking to you too. So, um, thank you very much for being on the show today, and, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Speaker Gerstheimer. I really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, uh, that was our show for this week. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of MPS Connections. We release new content on the first and third Thursday of almost every month. Do you have an idea for a podcast or other content from around this district? Send it to communicationmidlandps.org. Thanks.